Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Story Chat, our little show on the internet to talk about the art and passion of storytelling. John, it's been a while. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. And I want to apologize to uh, our Story Chat people. Um, and a shout out to Austin. Thank you for encouragement. Like, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, we'd like another one. You're very polite about it. But Austin, thank you very much. Uh, it, this whole thing is about encouraging you guys. And uh, it's been just a lot happening. But we're back. We're back. <laughs> so thank you for hanging in there with us. And I got a special treat for you today. So it'll be a lot of fun. So. A, spe a special treat? Oh, John, what do you possibly mean? <laughs> I'll bet you know what it is. Okay, <laughs> Dramatic Skyline. Dramatic Skyline. You recognize it? Okay, we're actually in Burbank, California. Ooh. We're at... Whoa. Hang, hang on right there. You see over my shoulder? That sells... What's that say? Kappa Studios. Kappa Studios. Yeah, what's up? Kappa, Kappa Studios. Studios. Yes, this is where um, a lot of faith-based films are done. And this is where uh, the chosen is done. Uh, they do post production chosen. So one, I, I, I do some work here. I'll tell you about the job we're working on, which is very exciting. Um, but I've always, like I would always like to just bump into Jesus. I think that'd be so cool. <laughs> you know, maybe in the hallway. Who knows? Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, but it's just just a lot of faith based stuff is done here. Um, a lot of redemptive media, and really, this is a picture of what I, I would love for us to do in South Georgia on the production end. This is most, let's say post-production. On the production end in South Georgia, we want to do redemptive media. Mm -hmm. And all the, it's interesting, Brian, I was just thinking about this. I was reading, um, who was it? C.S. Lewis? Oh, it might have been Frederick Buechner. Talk, oh yeah, Frederick Buechner was talking about, I'm teaching creative writing, but do I want to empower people that are going to write stuff that demoralizes or degrades mm. or depresses people? It's like, oh, yeah. wow. So that's interesting. So we're trusting, we're trusting you with this, this secret information here on how to make stories better. Um, but we, as far as redemptive media, we empower you to create stories with hope that point up in some way. I was getting ready to ask you what redemptive media means, but it, that was a nice summation right there. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's cool. Well, would you like to come inside? Sure. Yeah. Let's take a look. Okay, cool. All right. So let's go inside. Uh, this is kept I'm going to put in the secret code here and we'll get in here. Dum, 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 dum. R2D2 yeah. to get in there. Oh, yes. Or Mission Impossible. I like that, too. Okay, cool. And I'm in. Okay, we're in. Okay, so now we're at Kappa Studios. And you can see. See? I promise you, we're in Kappa Studios. This is not like a set, a movie set. So let's see here. We have time here. Here's Brad. Who are we with? Brad. Oh, you, oh. is this a video? Or yes, it is. Oh, you know what? Oh, John, I'm losing you. Oh, you're losing me? Okay. Oh, so I got you now. There we go. It's a podcast thing. You want to just say hi? Sure. Who okay. say hi to? Uh, this is say hi to our audience. It's a podcast. Hi, called podcast Star Chat. audience. <laughs> it's called Star Chat with John Fornoff, which happens to be my name, which is like fit. How did, that is a rare. I know. It's rare. It's just like, I thought, you know, I think I want to be part of this since yeah. it's calling to me. So yeah. Brad, yes. Brad helps run things here at Kappa. He and, he and Paul, uh, Paul Long. And just Brad's a great guy. Just amazing. Tell me real quick. Yeah. We go more. I'm sorry. I sprung this on you. You're great. You're great. Up. I like sprung sort of like you did to me the other day, right? Uh, I remember. I tend to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even recognize you as being sprung on me. Just, just you. Go. This is your life. This is my life. What makes, we talk about, so what makes great story? What do you think? Who makes great story? What makes great story? In your opinion. Yeah. I think if it just sort of connects with kind of the human experience in a way that it just connects with like, uh, I don't even know. I it, It's my first answer is, you know, when you see it, you know, when you don't. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a horrible answer. No. When something connects with sort of something deeper than the brain or something within the brain. Let me look at music. You, you hear a symphony, you, 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 your brain knows where the notes should go. Right. Yeah. You just feel where the notes should go. And when they finally, when that symphony hits a certain thing, you just connect with it, right? Yes. Conversely, you take those same beautiful notes, mm -hmm. perfect notes, change their sequence, and it'll sound like a four-year-old banging on a piano, wow. right? So I look at story the same way. Certain structures, certain emotional beats just connect with the human spirit in 
a way that is just satisfying. Love that. I've never heard that put like that. Just for, thank you. Thank you. I learned that on the story chat with John. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, wow. That's cool. That was awesome. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. the whole plug there. Yeah. No. I get all my information from story chat. <laughs> With, with John Fornoff. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was, wait for the dramatic pause. Oh, that's what that was. I, I didn't recognize that. Yeah, I know. I know. Brian, Brian is a fellow director, so he knows about this stuff, right. and I should have trusted his instincts. Well, I've taken up more of your podcast than you intended, brother. But um, I do have one more question. Oh, if one you would have just one more. Yeah, one more. I'm in. Uh, you guys uh, do faith based movies. I, I call it another way of it's redemptive media. Well, okay. I, what what is your dream here at Capital? What, what would you like to oh. do? Like ideally, what would you like to do? Because you do a lot of really cool stuff here. We're gonna, we're gonna show you some stuff. Okay. So I understand the question, and I think I might have told you this. If not, I'll say it again, okay. right? or I'll say it now. Okay. Myself and Paul, uh, the I don't know where I am. He begins, or vice versa anymore. My hope for Kappa is similar to my hope for myself, which is, you know, sorry, long answer. We're asked, like, what is the five-year plan? What is the dream? What is the hope? My hope is to... Oh, this is a low battery. Yeah, it is low battery. Does okay. keep going? Keep okay. going. My hope, John, sincerely, is I just want to be faithful to Christ today. Mm. Wow. That's Tomorrow cool. has enough trouble of its own. I don't have a long-term plan. I don't have... A, we used to. We did wow. for decades. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've stopped that. We just say, Lord, how can I be faithful to you today? What does faithfulness today look like? That's fascinating because uh, one thing they do here, Kappa, is is they pray over. Um, are we still there? Yeah, oh, still yeah, there. no, you're good. You're this, good. I'll let you know if you go out. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, they they pray. They pray every day. They pray, uh, and we had like a Bible study this morning. They, this place is. All right, my finger is in the wall. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a video camera guy on my on my phone. But anyway. Uh, this place is like bathed in prayer. There's a lot of prayer going on. They pray over major decisions, pray over just little decisions. It's just like, you can just feel when you walk in, there's something special about this place. And it, that's that's part of it. It's just like just being built. Where, where's God leading? That's right. Yeah. Just, I just we just want to be in, we just want to be obedient to God, just walking by, by the Spirit. Just one tiny step of obedience at a time leads to patterns, leads to habits, right? Yeah. And after getting it wrong, for so long, we're just like I feel like for the first time we're getting a glimpse of what it is to walk by faith and just to just be totally transparent. You've seen me when I'm grumpy in short in in what well, I'm always short, but that's a different time. But like, um, but you know what I mean? Just like yes, in, yeah. in this. Okay, we need to repent. We need to make that right, and just and you do it again, then do it again, then then repent again. It's just like just walk by faith, walk in obedience day by day. Hour by hour. Paul said to me, he goes, Brad, we're like alcoholics, meaning just like we can't worry. It's like we can't worry about, you know, not drinking a year from now. Mm -hmm. Can we just get through today? Yeah. I and gotcha. In our case, that's a maybe an insensitive analogy, John, mm -hmm. but like we're addicted to idolatry. We're addicted to serving something other than our God. Mm -hmm. We're addicted to putting ourselves higher than mm -hmm. we ought to be. Yep. We're addicted to not treating each other as more important than ourselves. Wow. Right? Wow, yes. And so in That's the same the, way, yeah. can I go one hour of faithfulness? And I'm not like mm -hmm. on eggshells, like, but yeah, it's yeah. just, Lord, help us be faithful between now and the time of this podcast ends. I love it. And that that is, obedience is success to us. Wow. Wow. That's really good. And a little more, I mean, a little icing on the cake. You just yeah. have the cake there. But um, the first comes to mind. Uh, let everything you do be done in love. Yes. There's something about being motivated by love. So that's how you prefer. That's the whole secret of the Ten Commandments. It's like, yeah. love your neighbors. Oh, I feel that here. Just feel like, like, yes, we have grumpy days. We have hard days. But we, we true, there's a, a love and respect for each other here. And I think it's that makes it unique. Everybody Brother, I know you, you sure you've heard me say this. If not, I'll say it again. That like, like John and I were working on a Bible project together. Mm -hmm. And is it okay to share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, John's directing this incredible verse-by-verse throughout the entire Bible project here. And from minute one, it's like, I don't know how that's going to impact the world. And that's not my concern. The maybe massive people might be incredibly impacted by what you're doing, what we're doing on the Bible project. Right. Mm -hmm. Having said that, if we're concerned about that, but we're not living 
to God's glory with each other. Oh, amen. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You're pre- yes. Yes. We're not, yes. And I, yes. And I, and I, exactly. I love that exactly because I yeah, feel yeah. like I have parts. Like, I've seen things grow up in me where I'm gripping things too tight and things like that. My point is if we're not living the very scriptures with one another, man, what the heck are we doing? We're exactly. just, we're just doing a job and we're just, and we can do that. And we might be successful by some definitions, but there's no joy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's just live right. And, and in my view, live, living right is to live according to the scriptures and just be faithful to God in every possible way. I don't, I'm not there, but I know the target. That's fine. And my, I will wrap up here. Just time with my pastor was telling me one time, I want, you know, impact the world. That's what I want to do. She's, don't worry about impacting the world. Be faithful. Be, be obedient with Amen. what God has for you today. Let, let God make the impact. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Blessings. Great Man. stuff. Right. <laughs> That's why you should listen to... <laughs> Wait, story what? <laughs> Is it story time? Not story time. Story chat. Story, story chat. chat. Sorry. Story, story chat with, with John, John Fogarty. <laughs> That's exactly John right. John Fogarty. We're I all love wrong. It. <laughs> Thank you. That was a dead one. Let's see you. Right. Okay. We'll see you. <laughs> I had to think of a quote of foe, famous foe. You did famous foe. That was a wonderful foe. Okay, I bye. love it. <laughs> So just to show you, uh, that's going to be our next pod podcast uh, story time with John Fogarty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you got it. Let's do it. Run the race. Uh, my friend Chris Dowling did this film, so that was done here for the post. What's another one? Oh, running the bases. That one. It's fun because I know Brad. Yeah, I know some. Oh, and this one. This is called uh, Family Camp. And guess what? I know the Beaver. <laughs> David. Aker. Yeah. So it's cool. That's fun. And she might be very busy, but we're going to say hi. She actually runs Kappa Studios. She's the one right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let me show you around just real quick. My battery's running out, but I want to show you. They did um, Carrie Solomon and Chuck Consulman. God's Not Dead. They do that here. Oh, fun. What's done here? I thought that was really well done. Actually, Grace Unplugged, this one. That's uh, Brad's movie. We just met. Brad wrote and directed that one. Oh. And uh, okay, right over there. I can't go close to it because our <laughs> the, the phone gets out of range. But that movie right there is Grace Unplugged, done by Brad Silverman, who we just met. He wrote and directed that. that and he wrote and directed Selfie Daddy. He has a selfie dad. Hmm. Um, so that's cool. And then um, I'm running out of battery, so... But I want to show you one more thing here. Yeah, going down the stairs. And you guys recognize that. Oh, yeah. The, the Chosen is done here. It's post, they do the post here. So that's kind of cool. So, um, so, so what do they do at Kappa Studios? Like, what's their, uh, their MO? It's mostly post production. Um, what, uh, what does that mean to the, to the layman, the person who has no idea? Uh, sure. A sound design, they do. Um, Sound design, they do post-production, they do uh, ADR, uh, automatic dialogue replacement. Uh, when you do audio in the field, it doesn't always turn out in the field. You have to have the actors come back in and redo that line. They do that here. Uh, a lot of a lot of post-production, like as far as uh, Foley, um, like where they walk out the scenes, that kind of stuff. Um, where they do sound effects beyond The Chosen, for instance. Uh, the Chosen is done on the sound stage here. I'm going to show you in just a bit. Um, but anyway, a lot of really cool stuff is done here, um, including, uh, not, they didn't do King, King Kong. Kong? Oh, <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> oh, I gotta show you the coffee machine. This is like, this is a, a gift from heaven. Oh man, this that's hot, next level stuff right hot, there. It's wonderful. It's amazing. So, um, I'm doing, um, as Brad mentioned, um, I've been honored, very honored. Jeff Holder, um, was on this project. He still is. He's writing it. But he recommended me for directing the audio drama Bible we're doing. It's a word-for-word translation of the Bible. It's a two-year project. And we're dramatizing the Bible. And we're always asking, what did it sound like? So it's a word-for-word, but we're doing sound effects, music, um, sound design, all that kind of stuff. Just really bring it to life. Okay. So I just ran into my friend, Tyler. All right. Tyler did um, did sound design along with Nels, and they do Foley. They do all the sound effects, all that kind of stuff. Bring it together. They're, they're, they're recording when we're recording these. And Tyler helped do, we did Philippians 2 for a pilot. 
And um, behind it, there's this, there's a scene where we talk where Paul is talking, Apostle Paul is talking, and he's talking about how uh, Jesus um, uh, took on human likeness. He um, became a man, and he humbled himself even to death on the cross. So you read that, and it's like this powerful passage, right? What we did was what we did was we put sound behind it. So like so the first thing you hear is this montage. So when you describe it, go ahead. Yeah. So we're going through the life of Jesus and we start with Jesus as a baby crying and how Mary would probably be comforting him and and the the just the silent night is we're sh- we we can listen to it for a few seconds. And then we we zoom forward to about the middle of his life where he's He's speaking to a crowd of people, and that's that's the G, uh, the Jesus we spend most of our time with. Uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Yeah, yeah this it, it, in the middle, and then we go, we flash forward to the end. So we do a quick beginning, middle, end, and we make that a real epic moment. It's powerful. Almost everyone who listens to it, it feels chills when they first. Yeah. Hear it. And that's, that's the thing. It's like when we're doing the word, like we read the word, sometimes you read it so many times, it's just kind of like, oh, I've read it before. Oh, I know this. I, okay. I, I'm, we want them to hear it, hear it in a new way. Yeah. And, and, and you did a beautiful job on that montage. Thank yeah. That's just, <laughs> it was my favorite part. It's just, it's just, just beautiful. Of it. So great job. So what are you looking forward to on this then? Uh, I'm looking forward to showing that, showing a new light to the Bible uh, all around. My favorite part about it is it forces context. There, there's no way to misinterpret the Bible if you're, if you can hear it, you can hear what's happening at all moments. You, you never think, oh, okay, I wasn't imagining Paul in chains while he was writing this. You're forced to know this is why he was doing this. Oh, this is a letter. This wasn't. Uh, he wasn't speaking to them personally. It, exactly. it just it makes it to where I feel like you, no matter what, you always know where, like you always know the context that you're supposed to. That's cool, and it, 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 it's it's and also the context of what's happening as he's writing, but also in in the verbiage itself. Like we're talking about, sometimes we'll do it in our imagination. What, what was that? Like? We did the life of Jesus in about like what? How many seconds? Was it fifteen or what? It's powerful that 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 sequence. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. I can't wait to see what we'll do next. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's only going to get better. Yeah. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> Appreciate right. it, man. Thank you. All right. That's awesome. And I love that even in um, I don't know if you can still hear me. He's he's frozen, but uh, I love even in that small moment the basic kind of tenets of storytelling is followed. You have to have the beginning, and the middle, and the end. This is the studio where we record. There's Beto right there. That's awesome. Okay. So real quick, I mean, just bringing this on you, but I kind of do things that way. So I'm sorry. Okay, so Nels did sound design on our pilot as well. And his focus was on John 20. And that's the whole passage where Mary comes to the tomb and she discovers the stone has been rolled away. And she thinks, oh, no, Jesus' body has been stolen. She runs um, to meet Peter and, and uh, meet the disciples and tell them they, you know, his body's gone. And, and you think about those times and it's like, when you read it, it's like, we usually are reading, like we, we picture it, like it's red, right? Oh like, yeah. Like from the pulpit or we just read, we just read like when Mary discovers she's seen the Lord and she, and she runs to the disciples, she goes, I've seen the Lord. And that's how we read it. Well, it didn't sound like that back then. I'll bet. Because she's <laughs> running, Right. And so we have her we have her running and she's panting. And then she goes, she's panting, right? And she's, I've seen the Lord. And she's excited. So we're dramatizing it, but just making it realistic. Like, what did it sound like? So what's been fun for you as far as working on the project? With, oh, with sound boy. design and stuff? Uh well, it's it's uh just a perfect platform to get all the creativity going. Uh yeah. on- well, since it's all audio and since the uh the kind of the nature of the Bible, it's it's uh it's awesome in the traditional sense yes. of the word. Truly uh, epic. <laughs> truly epic, yeah, deserving of we the title. It's epic, but it's like really the Bible is epic. Yeah, okay. The, yeah. the bigger you can go, you know, those sound elements just fit and your imagination is gonna really fill in a lot of blanks. And I think that's a fun way to uh to really push boundaries and be creative it's it's been a lot of fun it, it really has what, and uh, i know you gotta get back to it what what was surprising to you as you worked through the process or what was something like an, a discovery for you or just something you know uh i think the energy that everybody's bringing towards it mm-hmm. i think that's something that was really discovering I, I thought it was it was really really nice having having everybody just be 
just be on board, just 100%. A lot I mean, of fun. You point, and that, there was a, just a great energy in the team. That's, yeah. and that's helpful because we've got two more years to go. <laughs> so yeah. we better yeah, exactly. That. exactly. Yes, thanks for being part of this. Yeah, thank All you. Right. Appreciate thank it. Well, blessings, man. Okay. Yeah, take All right. Away. Okay, thanks. So um, it's fun it, here because like anytime you walk down the hall, you might run into like a writer or producer. We've got our composer, Dave uh, Siebels is down here. Um, it's just, it's just a great place. So Brian, I've been kind of like blabbing on solo here. So feel free to jump in. Sorry. Oh, no, kinda... you're, you're good. Um, okay. uh, I, that, that's really cool. Now uh, with this whole process, because you're telling the Bible in a very, frankly unusual manner like that's it's it's not a way that's been done before really from well at least by are you familiar with a project similar to this uh, the, the the most similar one is typically is audio um book like an audio, mm -hmm. audio book where you just kind of like you you read and you might have different actors with different voices and stuff alexander scorby is was the classic one where he just narrated the whole thing beautifully mm -hmm. but this is something different the closest to it was uh, Zondervan relent, uh, launched, um, I'm sorry, that was just had pizza for lunch, sorry. Yeah. Uh, they launched the Bible experience. Mm -hmm. Really well done uh, with, with the different actors. Uh, they had uh, Denzel Washington, Samuel Jackson. Oh, cool. Uh, amazing, amazing uh, cast there. Um, but we want to take that, that was beautifully done, but we want to take that one step further. And we want to really pulling that sound design in a whole in a yeah. way so um we're doing some stuff we haven't heard done before in audio bibles uh we've an audio drama bible it hasn't been done like this that i know of yeah the the closest project that i can think of it would have been something like uh andy circus's the screw tape letters through focus on oh. the family radio theater because they took the, about that with a friend of mine yeah yeah, yeah. they took the, they took the book and added a couple things they added some dialogue for the humans but the dialogue of screw tape was very much unchanged uh, that, uh, very little of it was changed to make screw tape present like he was giving a lecture rather than writing a letter but that was the mm -hmm. only dialogue change and you know what? Hats off to my mentor and friend, Paul McCusker, who wrote that. Um, Paul is a stickler for, um, I love his writing. Just, just his, his, you know, his stuff that he writes from his heart is beautiful, powerful stuff. And he mentored me, got me into, in the, into this world, Adventures in Odyssey. Um, he was my, uh, yeah, anyway, just think a lot of Paul. But uh, he did this with Chronicles of Narnia. I was just talking about this with a guy this morning. And um, he's, this guy just as discovering audio drama and uh so i was telling about you got to get he heard screw tape letters i said you got to hear chronicles of narnia that is the rolls royce of sound design you've got mark drury you've got um dave arnold you've got john williams uh, john williams john campbell is my john williams <laughs> <laughs> paul mccusker wrote that and here's what we can get to he was true to the source material he didn't mm -hmm. say we need to make thomas a fawn we need to make him a unicorn let's i i really want to see my creative vision no he respected what C.S. Lewis brought to the page and to our hearts. And he he respects those writers and he made it come alive through as true to the story as possible. And it was a hit. It was mm -hmm. a huge, oh yeah, no, they were fantastic. Like the copies. And um, yeah, just it's it's the best of sound design. Uh I, I still listen, it's like it's yeah, just amazing. So anyway, we want to bring that kind of sensibility to the Bible. Now, you know, in regards yeah. to, in regards to this project, now I'm sure you've learned a lot about the Bible and the mm -hmm. the uh, just the, the theological and philosophical ramification. What uh, mm -hmm. kind of random aside? What version? Of, well, it's not random. What version of the Bible are you using? Are you using? Uh, we're using NIV. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Although um, I, we did extensive research on this, and uh, our research determined that people in Bible times did not speak in King James English. Uh, it was just a shock to us that I didn't wow, say oh, I did not know did, that <laughs> did not speak in British accents back then in Israel. And it was a shocker. Our research proved this out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was eye opening for us. So we decided, let's do it. Yeah. Instead of British accent. Let's make it <laughs> an approach. It's, it's mostly an American audience, although it's going, yeah. going throughout the English speaking world is a free phone app. A free oh, app nice. All over the world, English speaking world, We're, but we wanted like a standard American, not like "Hey, dude," like not contemporary, but yeah. standard American where it's approachable. And that's how the King James was when it first came out. It was very yes, cool. yes. It, it, these and vowels. We think of that as highfalutin back then. That's how people talked. Mm -hmm. you know? 
uh, yeah. Now, uh, that was sorry. That was the quick aside. Now, now for the actual question is <laughs> what what have you have you learned anything? Like I said, you've learned probably a lot about the Bible, philosophy, mm-hmm. philosophy theology. Has mm-hmm. you learned anything about the craft of storytelling or audio drama that you, you know what hadn't I want to do before? You know what I do? You're, you've got some great questions brewing there. I want to do this. Let's make that part two, if you part want. two, part two. Yes, because we're all, we're out. I don't want. I don't want to like. I don't want to get too long winded for our, our listeners who have like like a thirty minute commute and they're out of time. It's true. Anyway, it's true, it's true. Part, I would love to do. You've gotten some great great questions, um, but let's do that. And I think Brian, you and I were were uh, praying ahead of time, and that what I guess one of the it boils down to you as you're listening here or you're watching. Uh, I guess, if it boils down to one word, it's encouragement. That's what this show is about: encouraging you as a writer or as a creator, as a storyteller. And uh, we would encourage you here. So um, we just hope that this glimpse into what Kappa Studios is doing gives you a glimpse into your future as a creator. Um, They've got writers here. They've got directors here. They've got uh, post-production is done here. But you might plug into a studio one day, you know, as a storyteller. Uh, And there's storytellers here doing story through sound. There's storytellers doing story through editing. You're telling a story when you edit, when you cut that scene a little sooner than you normally would, or you do it a rapid succession, or you're telling us you're, you're, it's another chance to write the movie, but when you get to the editing, so there's all, we're all telling stories here, but I'll encourage you to give you a picture of what can be done. Um, when you really dedicate your craft to the Lord and you just you use just, like Brad was saying, I love what Brad said. It's like, it's like, we just follow him day by day. And let God take care of the big picture. You know, we're, we're just taking care of the, the step by step, you know, let him light up the big path. And right now we're just doing that light into our lamp into our feet kind of part. And he'll do the light into our path, right? We just follow that lamp right into our feet and he leads us on the path. And, um, and amazing things are happening here. It's just, it's cool. It's cool to be part of this. And then uh, this is tied in with South Georgia because this is a picture. They're doing post here, post production. And South Georgia, where we just were a few weeks ago, is um, they're doing uh, the production side of things and they're getting ready to shoot a movie there in Little Ooh. Quitman, uh, Georgia. Uh, they're doing a, a movie that takes place in Alaska. They're going to be doing it in Georgia, which is pretty cool. Ooh. Snow and everything. I'm going I'm to put it amazing. in the side. If you need a contact in Alaska, I know people who live up there. So I'm just, Gonna this throw that out there. Great, great connection. Great connection. <laughs> but anyway, we, we just bless you guys. Just thank you for being part of this. Thanks for your patience and our little hiatus there. It was just um just thank you. Thank you for being there. And any way we can uh bless you, encourage you in your writing and your storytelling, just let us know. And back to you, Brian. Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's a uh, very well said. It's uh we're back. Um, I hope to I, I want to do uh, keep doing the one a week like we've been trying to do. But as you know, John's very busy. I'm I'm in the middle of a kind of a tumultuous season myself. Uh, things really haven't stopped since Christmas. So I'm just I'm trying to make time uh, for for other things. So I'm uh, going to be doing as much as I can. We're going to be cranking these out as best we can. But uh, uh, thank you for your patience yeah, <laughs> when yeah. it came back uh, we, for the past couple months. Yeah, thank you so much. And it, it's it's fun. It's fun to do story chat with you all. It's story, story chat with John Pornoff, but it's really story chat with you all. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, thank you. Blessings. And you guys have a good one. And keep writing. Keep writing. Keep writing from your heart. Write from your heart. And write from just for, write from your experience. Write from your pain. Keep writing. But give, give that ribbon of hope in what you do. And uh, we want you to keep writing because the world needs good stories more than ever. So keep at it. We're counting on you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.